In the last lesson, we look at how to build the mockup, but in this very lesson, we'll be looking at how to add interactivity to our app. When you click the increase button, the number should increase, and when you hit the decrease button, the number should decrease. And when you hit the reset button, everything should go back to normal. And if you hit the decrease button that is less than zero, then the banner should change. This is basically what we'll be building with JavaScript. All right, looking through our readme files, we're going to declare just one function. The rest of the function will be JavaScript built-in functions. So if you look at the first one, which is counter button, this will be our major function that will make this app possible. So let's just dive into it. Looking into the HTML mockup that we wrote, the few things that changed is just this onclick attribute. Onclick attribute is just added to all the buttons. Then you can see that we have some minus plus just to identify which button. Then we also added ID to the counter element so that we can target it with the JavaScript. All right, so let's dive into it. So I've created an empty JavaScript file and in the HTML file, it is actually linked as well. So what we want to do right now is to declare our counter function. To declare the function, we're just going to say const, then counter btn. Then we have a parameter, then we have the arrow, then the curly braces. Here we want to pass in btn, that's we're passing the button values which we declared in our HTML. There are two basic things we need to do. One is to increase our counter function or our counter app. The second is to change the background when the number is less than zero. So let's just drop a comment so that we can understand what we need to do. I'm just going to say, first thing we need to do is increase and decrease counter. Increase and decrease counter. Okay. The next thing we need to do is to change the background. So we can just say change counter background. Okay. So now we know exactly what we are about to do. Let us first target these, our counter div, which is the ID of counter TST. To do that, we just need to store it in the variable just at the top here. So we can say let counter equals to, it's going to be counter TST. So we want the test inside, so we can just say test content. Okay, so we can just go ahead and say console.log. Let's even try to check what we have. Console.log. So let us log the counter. So let us try to run it and see what we get. Right now, if we click, we can't see anything, but let's inspect and do console. So each time we click, we see, we don't see anything really. So for us to see something, let's try to declare the conditional statement. Now we're just going to say if if the button, if the btn is equals to minus, if it's equals to minus, which is what we declare here, if it's equals to minus, then we want to console.log, want to console.log this value, whatever value that we're getting. 
So let's just refresh. So we're getting zero, which is cool. Now, um, what we need to do is just for us to be sure that this is converted into number because we're going to be calculating at the end. Let's just use the pass float function which JavaScript gives to us. Pass float function. So we're just going to wrap it inside. Right. So we are sure that we are getting number from this very variable. Okay. So let's just remove this console.log. But what we want to do actually is to increase the number. So whenever this button is equals to minus, we want to decrease. But if the button is plus, we want to increase. So what we need to do here is to just say counter minus equals to minus equals to one. So for every time you hit the minus button or the decrease button, we minus one from the actual value. And how do we know that? We can just bring back, let's try console.log again. Console.log, then counter. So let's try it out and see what we get. If we hit the decrease button, you can see that every time there is minus going on with the number. Now that we are sure with that, let's move forward with our app. Let's try to make it reflect on this very number. So for us to do that, we need to, we need to target this counter text. We need to target the counter text. And for us to counter, for us to target it, we will we'll just come and say counter text dot text content. Then let's give it the value of counter. So whatever value we are getting here, let's just give it red. So let's try to save it and see what we get. You can see whenever we are hitting it. Is working but when we hit the other buttons nothing happened yet okay so let's keep our program running the next thing is we need to target the plus button the plus button so the same thing as well we're just gonna say else if the button btn is the same thing as plus then this time around, we want to increase the button. So we just say plus. And let's just save it and run it. You can see that it's working perfectly. The next thing is we need to do another else if. So what we can do here is just say else. Whatever it is, we want to convert this back to just zero. So we want to reset. So whenever it is not minus button, plus button, we know that we are hitting the reset button. So let's return it. You can see that works. So the next thing we need to implement now is let the background change at every point that the number changes to either negative or positive. To do that, let's go back to our function. Then let's declare it just after this. We need to check if the counter is less than zero, then we want to change the background color. So how to do that? We're just still going to write another if statement. Then we're just going to say if counter is less than zero, then we want to change the background of the counter text. So we're just going to say style dot background background color then equals to 
let's use pound F054, then 54 again. So not O, zero. And we need to wrap it in a string. Okay, I think we're good. Let's check it out. Yeah, so whenever it's less than zero, but when it's back to positive, nothing is changing yet. So let's see use conditional statement to undo that. So we can still say else, else if. Okay, this time around, we want to check if the counter is equals to zero. So we can just say counter if it's equals to zero. We want to still do something with the background. We want to change the background to default. So the default is going to be 00848, then F. So let's try it out. If you click the reset, you can see that it's returning back. Yeah, but what we want to do now is we want if the number is more than zero or is greater than zero it should give us another color so you can guess already we can just use the else statement then change the background you can change the background to 7 bb e e b let's see what that gives us and you can see so Right now, we can see based on the number, we can reset, we can increase, we can reset at any point, and we can see that the background color is responding. Around 27 lines of code, we are able to declare conditional statements and function in order to carry out this activity. So if you need the source code, the source code is available for you, and you can always use it in your projects whenever there is need. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on all our social media and do. Until next time, I'll see you in the next one.